Preparation Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. If you become like God, you can read His thoughts. And if you do not, you will find the inspirational perception of truth impossible. You can never become a great man or woman until you have overcome anxiety, worry, and fear. It is impossible for an anxious person, a worried one, or a fearful one to perceive truth. All things are distorted and thrown out of their proper relations by such mental states, and those who are in them cannot read the thoughts of God. If you are poor, or if you are anxious about business or financial matters, you are recommended to study carefully the first volume of this series, The Science of Getting Rich. That will present to you a solution for your problems of this nature, no matter how large or how complicated they may seem to be. There is not the least cause for worry about financial affairs. Every person who wills to do so may rise above want, have all he needs, and become rich. The same source upon which you propose to draw for mental unfoldment and spiritual power is at your service for the supply of all your material wants. Study this truth until it is fixed in your thoughts and until anxiety is banished from your mind. Enter the certain way which leads to material riches. Again, if you are anxious or worried about your health, realize it is possible for you to attain perfect health so that you may have strength sufficient for all that you wish to do and more. That intelligence which stands ready to give you wealth and mental and spiritual power will rejoice to give you health also. Perfect health is yours for the asking, if you will only obey the simple laws of life and live aright. Conquer ill health and cast out fear. But it is not enough to rise above financial and physical anxiety and worry. You must rise above moral evil doing as well. Sound your inner consciousness now for the motives which actuate you and make sure they are right. You must cast out lust and cease to be ruled by appetite, and you must begin to govern appetite. You must eat only to satisfy hunger, never for gluttonous pleasure, and in all things you must make the flesh obey the spirit. You must lay aside greed. Have no unworthy motive in your desire to become rich and powerful. It is legitimate and right to desire riches if you want them for the sake of the soul, but not if you desire them for the lusts of the flesh. Cast out pride and vanity. Have no thought of trying to rule over others or of outdoing them. This is a vital point. There is no temptation so insidious as the selfish desire to rule over others. Nothing so appeals to the average man or woman as to sit in the uppermost places at feasts, to be respectfully saluted in the marketplace, and to be called rabbi, master. To exercise some sort of control over others is the secret motive of every selfish person. The struggle for power over others is the battle of the competitive world, and you must rise above that world and its motives and aspirations and seek only for life. Cast out envy. You can have all that you want, and you need not envy any man what he has. Above all things, see to it that you do not hold malice or enmity toward anyone. To do so cuts you off from the mind whose treasures you seek to make your own. He that loveth not his brother loveth not God. Lay aside all narrow, personal ambition and determine to seek the highest good and to be swayed by no unworthy selfishness. Go over all the foregoing and set these moral temptations out of your heart, one by one. Determine to keep them out. Then resolve that you will not only abandon all evil thought, but that you will forsake all deeds, habits, and courses of action which do not commend themselves to your noblest ideals. This is supremely important. Make this resolution with all the power of your soul, and you are ready for the next step toward greatness, which you will find explained in the following chapter. End of chapter 5